everybody. I'm Jack the Ramblin' Rack and Turn. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having a great week. This is Tuesday night, so we're going to do a quick book tag. I was fortunate enough to be tagged by Rania at Rania Books in his resurrection of the New York Times book tag, which was on like a three or four year hiatus here on BookTube. And I believe he said it was originally created by Marie Burke. So I'll try to I'll, you know link those. Uh, but let's jump in. Prompt one. What book is on your nightstand right now? Well, I mean, book singular seems comical. And I put up a, I'll put a uh, picture up on Instagram of like the Tower of Books on my nightstand. <laughs> um, and I'll actually link my Instagram. I, I created a couple of weeks ago at the behest of uh, some different friends. So um, I'll link that as well in the description box. But American Poetry, 20th Century Volume 1 uh, from the Library of America. We've been reading a couple of different poets at night, including Nina Loy. I guess this is kind of a spoiler for my December marginalia, but who cares? Uh, the Complete Dead Sea Scrolls in English, not the whole thing, but uh, I just had this for last night because I was looking at the commentary on Habakkuk, the first two chapters of Habakkuk that is in here. Um, books that I've been sort of reading all month, in the past month even, uh, Psalms in English, the Journals of Emerson and Reporting Civil Rights Part 1. And you know, those are books that I've kind of been reading some of those for months, just continually. Uh, my Bible, again, reading daily, weekly. A um, couple of books, though, that I'm, I'm much deeper into. Uh, so Second Isaiah, the Anchor Bible Commentary on the sort of chapters 40 through 66 in Isaiah. Um, and I'll discuss more about this, why I'm talking about this um, later. On another prompt and then the two like novels that I'm reading that I'm in total love with uh, one's first time read which is Circe by Madeline Miller and then Spy Who Came In From the Cold by John Le Carey and this is a reread for me and this this I pulled down because uh, John Le Carey passed away uh, just this past weekend and both uh, an incredibly like insightful and humane person and a brilliant brilliant writer and this this book crackles um, and this is a delight. This is an astonishing work, and I love it. So uh, I'm reading those. I'll be finishing those this week or maybe this weekend. And then a couple of books that are on my nightstand, not because I'm reading, but because I plan to read it at some point soon. Uh, Trip Reads recommended a specific story from Nikolai Leskov, so I have his collection of uh, stories. Um, when I was reading Fortunes of War, I found myself drawn to Irene, thinking about Irene Nemirovsky, so I maybe reading one of her works uh, this month or next month, so I just kind of grab this down. And then a pair of crime crime books. It's <laughs> yeah, my, my sort of, you know, <laughs> staple in my reading. Uh, Elmore Leonard's Four Novels of the 1970s and Seicho Matsumoto's Inspector Imanishi Investigates, which this is um, one of my wife's favorite crime novels, so I'm looking forward to reading this quite possibly in December. Um, let's see. Yeah, so those are the books on my nightstand. <laughs> and I'll, I'll put up a picture of <laughs> what they look like. Um, prompt two, what was the last truly great book you read? It would be Passing by Nella Larson. I, you know, this was a reread in December, uh, at the very beginning of this month. And I, it reignited so many great thoughts uh, around this work and around, you know, its place, uh, both in the United States, in terms of like s social history and also like literary history. But also just what a tremendous work. Um, prompt three, if you could meet any writer, dead or alive, who would who would it be and what would you want to know? The tangents Herodotus can run down exponentially magnified by the internet would be really, really, really interesting, I think, personally. Um, that would be one that would be really fun. Prompt four, what books might we be surprised to find on your shelves? I don't know. What have you got? What, what books have surprised everybody so far? Tell me in the comments. I asked my wife, and she said, "Well, you you do have a couple of books by writers that you like pretty much despise," and pointed out that I have um, I have Savage Theater by Philip Roth, which I have not never read, but I I don't know when I will because I ha just have a very negative you know feeling and perception of his other works. So that would be one. Prompt five, how do you organize your personal library? Well, most of these are double stacks, and so to make that more efficient, I organize by publisher so that I can get two flat stacks together and then lay books horizontally across evenly. Um, that's just what I do. Um, prompt six, what book have you always meant to read and haven't gotten around to yet? And then anything you feel embarrassed to have never read, and I don't think anybody should ever feel embarrassed about what they haven't read, 
perhaps like to reflect and realize like, oh, I only read, you know, this genre or this type of writing or only from this period. That could be, you know, useful in terms of broadening our reading, but I don't know that it's about being embarrassed or ashamed. Um, it's not, those aren't words I usually use. Uh, books I have not read that other people have either talked about or, you know, not talked about. Uh, I have never read any of the Patrick O'Brien books. I've thought about it. Um, I've got Master and Commander. I've got a couple of the others, but I just haven't opened, you know, I haven't really dug in. Um, I, and then these two, I've been thinking about reading one of these next March, um, The Tale of Genji and Clarissa. I'm not sure. We'll see. If you guys think it would be interesting <laughs> to see me try to, you know, run an ultrathon uh, in March, I might be up for it. Um, I, I really am not sure which one, though, of Tale of Genji or Clarissa. They're each just enormous books, and that's why I haven't read them, is because I know it would be just a, a very serious time and, and mental commitment. And with the stack of books on my nightstand, I think it's clear the way my mind works. Uh, but who knows? Um, prompt seven, disappointing, overrated, just not good. What book did you feel like you were supposed to like but didn't? Well, when I was like 22, 23, it would have been works by people like Philip Roth, um, where I was sort of told like, this is the great you know, literary fiction of the 20th century in the United States and elsewhere, and I, I don't like it. Um, but one that a lot of people still regard highly and that I just can't find a way like through is um, Tender's the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And I know a lot of people who, who swear by Fitzgerald. I'm not one of them, but that, that would be one for me. Um, do you remember the last p book you put down without finishing? Yes, I do. And I put it down. So this is in The Shadow of Young Girls and Flower by Marcel Proust. I read Swan's Way back in, I want to say like May. And I was thinking like, you know, maybe I'll do like an every other month reread of In Search of Lost Time. Uh, and I got midway through In the Search of Young Girls and Flower, I want to say in August or September. Um, I think it was, it was in mid-August as school was starting back up and it was like virtual learning it was you know my daughter was having virtual learning for her schooling and i, I sort of just reached this point of realizing i truly love this book like i i adore this book i think it's um, it, it, this is possibly my favorite volume in the in search of lost time sequence and i wanted to be reading it when i was in a very positive like happy um you know joyful headspace and heart space like as a reader and I knew I wasn't in that space, so I kind of just set it aside and said, when I'm in that like right mood, this is gonna come back out. So, that's the one. Uh, prompt date, what kind of stories are you drawn to? Are there any that you steer clear of? <sighs> I don't know, I mean, I, I, I know that like crime novels are a staple for me. <laughs> I also, you know, weirdly like poetry, um, just, I, I think, I think works that feel like they're part of the, this tapestry of humanity, I really enjoy all of those. And whether that's science fiction or, you know, genre writing like horror, I think it, it can be very effective. I think essays can do that. Um, so, so I enjoy those. Um, and when I feel like there are all of these connections that, that, that exist, I think those are really interesting. But I also like those like weird, like flash of lightning bolt works that just shatter our perception of what um, what books can do. And then the, the movies are the same way. I love the movies that are like um, homages and referential, but I also love the ones that just stand alone. And you're like, I'm so glad there's someone who's creative who thought of that so that I could start to like consider that idea as well. Um, what do I steer clear of? I don't know. Stuff that uh, just feels deeply contrived, perhaps. I don't know. Um, Prompt nine, if you could pick one book for the president to read, what would it be? Second Corinthians. Um, <clears throat> that was quoted at one point. Uh, in terms of the president-elect, maybe Native Son by Richard Wright, which I read. I did a buddy read with Alan at Big Hard Books and Classics um, over the summer, and this was tremendous to reread. Prompt 10, what do you plan to read next? Well, <laughs> I am going to read this. This one was not on my nightstand, and I'm probably not going to read it, but I did want to mention... Mark Richardson and I think John David and like multiple other people were like just everybody was over the last week talking about Patrick Lee Firmer's A Time of Gifts and I don't think I'm going to re read this next but 
I almost like pulled this off and then I, I wanted to just say, no, I've got other stuff. Um, I did mention possibly um, Inspector Imanishi investigates, but once I finish um, uh, Spy Who Came In From the Cold and Cersei, the next work I'm probably gonna read is gonna be Jerusalem uh, by William Blake, which is why I was reading, rereading the book of Isaiah from the Bible, but also the Anchor Bible commentary on second Isaiah. So probably Jerusalem. Although Epitaph uh, is also like over on this shelf, ready to be put on the nightstand. You know, it's sort of like warming up right now to be on the nightstand, to be ready to go. Uh, so who would I tag? Because, you know, this is sort of like people who started channels in that, during that three to four year hiatus. Uh, I would be interested in what Duncan McCurdy has on his nightstand. Um, to the Lit House, I'd be interested in what she, you know, she's reading. Uh, and Alan Braswell, I think it would be interesting to hear. Alan, Alan has, you know, does tag so frequently that some of these, like me, we probably have a response. But I, some of the other ones I'd be interested in. So there we go. Everybody, I hope you're having a great week. Thanks for, you know, joining. And let me know if you've read any of these or if you would recommend that I avoid one of these. Thanks.